Hello everybody, I'm Podikaki on the Casual Gamers Nest and today we are about to play the Stanley Parable. The Stanley Parable is a Half-Life 2 mode, first person game, and uh, I must say from what I've heard and what I've seen, this game is all about making the right choices. Right or not, the choices have to be made in order for our character to uh, find our destiny. No matter what that destiny is, so let's begin a new game and see what Stanley Parable is all about. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. I think I am Stanley. <laughs> And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. So this is my desk then. I'm a DJ. It looks like I'm a DJ. Oh yeah. I've been sitting here for quite a while. Look at my chair. I think my bag. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. So I'm a robot. I only take orders to work. Hm. Simon. Simon? Nobody works around here. What's the deal? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, that's what he did. <laughs> Nothing opens here. Fascinating. Hmm. As Stanley entered the lounge, he was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. Can I get a drink around here? This looks so old. Are we in the 60s? Hmm. Popular scientist. Okay, that makes sense. I understand that design. And this too. And uh, Uncle. I cannot read that. Okay, let's go on. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Where's my boss at? Sir? Entering his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. It was at this point that he began to feel dizzy and a little sick, and even thought he might pass out when suddenly he noticed a keypad next to the filing cabinet in the corner of ah. his boss's office. Uh -huh. Stanley had never seen this panel before, 
and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. In fact, only Stanley's boss knew this, since the panel withheld access to the boss's greatest, darkest secret, and so he had assigned the keypad a combination that only he could possibly know, the number of his freshman dorm number in college, 1957. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Really now? Incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Hacks. Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. <laughs> Stanley then Amazing. into the newly opened passageway. As he drew deeper into the bowels of the building, Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. And just as he began to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find... To find? Rows and rows of monitors. Screens with a number above it. Stanley noticed, however, that these were not random numbers, but the number of employees who worked in the building, his co-workers. Even his own number, 427, had a place on the wall. That's me! But why a setup so elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance, or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him, revealing the ultimate <gasps> truth of the situation. Oh my! What a secret! By the way, the narrator's voice is epic. I love him! An enormous control panel Stanley discovered, but not one that controlled simple machinery. Buttons were labeled with emotions. Happy. Sad. Levers and knobs controlled actions. Walking, eating, doing work, or watching TV. Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, but of a human being. And the reality began to sink in. Stanley, like so many other people, reduced to images on a monitor, had been under someone's control, always at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly? He began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something happened. A spark. Stanley looked up and saw the generator overhead, still providing some small amount of power to the machine, keeping it alive. And knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, Stanley moved to the ladder in the back of the room and began to climb towards the rafters. How do you know what I'm about to do, man? Hmm? Are you in my head? Are you the voice in my head? Controlled by the voice. The higher Stanley climbed, the closer he felt to freedom, the further from enslavement. I'm gonna be free! That's so damn dark. So dark. Okay. Oh my god, what happened? Blackness. Power gone. All alone. And then... Ah! The light! I'm out! As he stepped through the door, into the fresh outside air, a feeling of liberation rushed through Stanley's body. <laughs> he had seen power. He had seen enslavement, and he had destroyed it. Heck yeah. The underling was in control now. He had found his leading role. Indeed. Stanley never discovered why everyone had gone missing, nor how and when he had come under the machine's control. And I didn't care. But it didn't upset him terribly, because he knew that this was how things were meant to happen. All he felt was a delight 
unlike any he had ever known before. Never again would he follow someone else's orders without question. Never. Never again would anyone tell Stanley where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Never. No more bosses. No more instructions on a screen. Stanley decides for himself now. And can fly. And he stepped out into the world. And he felt the cool breeze upon his skin. And Stanley was happy. <laughs> How cool is this game? Mm. 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 Hey, Davy Redden. Nice work. Oh, Mr. Kevin, your voice is magnificent. I love it. Please do more. Please do more voice acting for more games. You rock my socks. Ah. Well, I think uh, that's one way of ending things, following what the voice has to uh, offer. But I believe there are more endings. What would happen if you didn't do what the voice said? What would happen if you took a different way? Well, we're about to find out in the next episode of uh, Stanley Parable. I'm going to try out more endings and uh, see what happens. Thank you for playing this video. Thank you for watching this video. We're back in the menu screen. Yay! Uh, I was Podikaki on the Castle Gamers Nest. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for more.